Hello, Algebra 2 folks, and welcome to Rational Zero Theorem. You need your notes, a calculator, and a pen or a pencil, and probably your listening ears. All right, so here we go. So what did we do today? Well, today you had a polynomial, and I gave you a hint to help you factor that polynomial. But what are you going to do when I don't give you that hint? Okay, so today's goal, or this lesson's goal, is to find a way to solve those polynomials that can't be factored and Mrs. Brendan doesn't give you a hint. So they can't be factored using the common methods of factoring and I'm not going to give you a hint. Okay, so what would you do? Okay, please, don't cry. We will make it through it. It's not so bad. Okay, so we are going to use what's called the rational zero theorem. Okay, so every rational number can be written in this form, P over Q. Well, what is P? Well, P is the constant at the end of the polynomial. It doesn't have a variable. Okay, it's at the end of the polynomial. And the Q is the factors of the leading coefficient. Well, what's a leading coefficient? Well, the leading coefficient is the number that is tied to um, the variable with the largest exponent. So if you have the largest exponent of x to the third, that is the degree. And the number out in front of it is called the leading coefficient. So we are going to get our hints and our information using the P's over Q's test, which is really called the rational zero theorem, okay? Now, why do we say P over Q? Well, P over Q is a fraction. And so vocabulary, remember we're talking about rational numbers and rational numbers can be written as a ratio or a fraction, okay? Irrationals cannot be written as a fraction. Like three over four, that's not irrational, okay? Irrational numbers are numbers that go on forever, like pi, two pi, the square root of seven, okay? So things that can be written in fraction form is a rational number. Things that can't be written in fraction form is called an irrational number. And imaginary numbers are the I, okay? So we are gonna focus on solutions that can be written in fraction form, okay? That are rational numbers. That's why we have a P over Q. This is a rational number because it's a fraction. Okay, so how do I find the real zeros? Well, we have to look at our P and our Q and we gotta make factors of them, okay? So in this problem, what's P? Well, P is at the end, the one that doesn't have a variable. Okay, so P is eight. What's Q? Q is the leading coefficient, okay? That's the number that's associated with the x with the largest exponent, ah, uh, the degree of three, which is cubic, that's the leading coefficient. Now, you don't just take eight and divide it by two. That's not what we do. You literally need to leave them eight and two. And then we need to find all the factors of the top number and all the factors of the bottom number. Okay, so what do I mean by factors? Well, what are the factors of eight? What times what will give us eight? Well, one and eight multiply to make eight. Two and four multiply to make eight. What are all the factors that make two? Well, that would be one and two. All right, so 
we first found our p over q we figured out what p was we figured out what q was and then we found all the factors of what p is and all the factors of what would be q okay well then the second thing is you compile a list okay now you cannot forget the plus or minus every one of these could be plus or minus okay so i always put my plus or minus out in front and then I kind of do a big list. All right, so here's how I find that list. Every single one of these numbers needs to be divided by the bottom number. Okay, so the first thing I do is I take one and I divide it by one. One divided by one is one. It could be a plus one or a minus one. Then I take the two and divide it by the one. Two divided by one is two. Four divided by one is four. Eight divided by one is eight. Now I take all of those numbers again and divide them by two. One divided by two is one half. Two divided by two is one. It's already there. I don't need to write it again. 4 divided by 2 is 2. It's already there. I don't need to write it again. 8 divided by 2 is 4. It's already in my list. I don't need to write it again. So these are all the possible zeros that could divide into the polynomial and be your hint. So this is your list. We could have plus or minus 1. We could have plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 8, or plus or minus 1 half. Holy bucket. So what we would do is we would take every single one of them and divide them synthetically until we got a zero happy face. That's right. Here's the deal. I'm going to make it just a tiny bit easier for you. I do want you to be able to compile the list. But I don't think that you need to go through every single one of them until you get a zero. So what I'm going to allow you to do is, this is example number one continuing. I am going to make you write out the possible zeros. Okay? using your p's over q okay but then you can take out your calculator and find one that works you have to do all the work but you can use the calculator to find one so if i'm looking at this graph it's this one graph i know that negative two is a zero it's an x-intercept Therefore, it's a solution. Therefore, it's a zero. So I'm going to take that negative 2, and I'm going to use it to synthetically find my other factors. Okay, so this is x cubed. This is x squared. This is x. This is no x. So I'm going to make my list, and then I'm going to use one of them from the calculator from the calculator, the graphing calculator, or you can use Desmos to find one. Now, what I will not accept is that you just tell me the answers from the graph. You will get zero points out of eight. All right? So my expectation is that you're able to write out the list and then use your calculator to find one and then factor the rest of the problem. So I bring down my two. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Add them up, multiply, add them up, and multiply, and add them up. Now we should always get this if it's a true x-intercept. We should always get that smiley face 0. That means it negative 2 is a solution. So I'm going to write solutions down here and I'm going to add negative 2 to that list. That 
are the actual solutions. Not the possible ones, but the actual ones. Okay, now you take your quotient, just like we did yesterday, 2x squared minus 9x plus 4, and we factor that using the AC method. So 2 times 4 is 8. Two factors of 8 that make negative 9 would be negative 1 and negative 8. Rewrite it as a four-term problem and do some grouping. Okay, what do they have in common? They have an x in common. So I'm going to come over here. x, what's left over? 2x minus 1. What do these guys have in common? They have a negative 4. Okay, so I'm going to take out a negative 4, and what's left over is 2x minus 1. Then my x minus 4 comes together, and then I take 2x minus 1. And then I take and set each one of those equal to 0. That would be x minus 4 equals 0, x would equal 4, and 2x minus 1 equal to 0 would be 2x equals 1, x would equal 1 half. And those are my solutions. Now, what are the factors of this polynomial? This polynomial's factors are x minus 4, 2x minus 1, and take your solution and make it back into a factor, which would be x plus 2. So these are all the factors and these are the solutions. Okay, let's try it one more time. Okay, find your possible zeros. So let's do the possible zeros. I do require you to be able to do that. That's P over Q. P is 9. Q is 2. All the factors of 9 are 1, 3, 3, 3 times 3, but you can write it just once, and 1 times 9, and 2 is 1 and 2. Okay, find all the possible zeros. You take 1 divided by 1, that's 1. 3 divided by 1, that's 3. 9 divided by 1, that's 9. 1 divided by 2, that's 1 half. 3 divided by 2, that's 3 over 2. And 9 divided by 2, which is 9 divided by 2. Those are all your possible zeros that will work, that could work, to give you that zero happy face. Okay? So, I don't like that when that happens. I'll rewrite that really quick. Sorry. All right, so these are your possible zeros. You need to write that down for two points. That's the expectation. Then we can plug this into Desmos and we can find something that works. Here's one that works. Three right here. Okay, I can use any one of these to use to start out my synthetically dividing, but I can only use one of them. I can't just write down all the answers and expect full credit. So my actual zeros are, there we go. I'm going to use that three. Hopefully it'll give me a zero. So I'm going to put a 3 out in front. Now I'm going to synthetically divide this. I have x cubed, x squared, x, no x. I get a 2, a negative 7. I don't have an x, so I need a placeholder. Don't forget about that. And then no x would be 9. Drop down the 2. 2 times 3 is 6. Add them up, multiply, add them up, multiply, add them up and I better get a zero there. Now I'm going to take 2x squared minus 1x minus 3, and I'm going to use the AC method to get my other solutions, factors and solutions. Okay, so I have 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Two factors of negative 6 that give me 1 would be negative 3 and positive 2. 2x squared plus 2x minus 3x minus 3. Group them together. They have a 2x in common. Take out a 2x. I have x plus 1. 
take out a negative 3. That gives me x plus 1. My factors are 2x minus 3 and x plus 1. Okay, set them each equal to 0. 2x minus 3 equals 0. I get 2x equals 3. x equals 3 halves. And then take x plus 1, set it equal to 0, and get negative 1. So these are my solutions. What were the factors? The factors are these, the 2x minus 3 and x plus 1. And also from the first solution that we used, which would be x minus 3. Remember, because when we use synthetic division, we do the opposite number. So x minus 3 is actually the 3. So these are my factors and actual zeros, and these were my possible zeros. And so in order to get full credit, you must be able to find your p's over q's, your possible zeros, use one of them from the graph to find the rest of the solutions. All right. I will see you back tomorrow to practice this up.